I'm going to be who I'm going to be. You're going to be who you're going to be. Mm -hmm. That's fine. If I choose to be around you, that be who you are. Don't change because of me. What can I do? Mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid of the one that can't do anything uh, to uh, the, to the, to the, to the, the just body. to the body. But be afraid of the one that can kill soul both spirit, soul and body. body. Don't be. You don't don't change because of me. But when the opportunity presents itself, I'll give I'll give the gospel. I was just going to say, it's the gratefulness that you have from being saved that gets you on the right track. Right. And usually Amen. the people that had to come the furthest, so but these sinners are way more grateful than a person that wasn't yeah. Yeah. saved. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and so they usually the, the Paul are the ones that do the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, Lord, yeah. thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. You. Yeah. And go to Romans, uh, I see, uh, go to Romans chapter 6 while we're talking about this sin issue. Go to Romans chapter 6. Go ahead. Uh -huh. I wonder about uh, the body when we keep talking about the flesh uh -huh. and judgment. Mm -hmm. Aren't our bodies going to be replaced because they are sinful? You're right. Mm -hmm. So, But the uh, things that you've done in this body will be judged before that. Is it being judged because of what you've done in the spirit or in the body? Both. Whatever you do, the things that that you do in your body, both good and bad, that's what's going to be judged. The good things are obviously Christ reigning supreme in our life, right? That's what's going to be. We're going to be. We're going to receive a reward based on the truth, based on how we labored in the doctrine. That's why it says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God," right? Uh, then the things that we do bad in our bodies, that's also going to be judged. That's going to be the bad things that the fire is going to burn up. That's why it says, "Build." Uh, uh, take heed that every man builded thereupon wood, hay, and stubble, mm -hmm. or gold, silver, precious stones. The gold, silver, precious stones is basically the Christ living in us and performing those good works, right? The wood, hay, and stubble is the things that we do, the things that's going to be burnt up. And a lot of that, those bad things is teaching doctrine that's wrong. That's wood, hay, and stubble. Because you're building on the wrong, you're, you're building on the right foundation. Most people preach Christ, but they're preaching them according to the prophecy. So some believers, basically some of our denominational brothers and sisters, they're saved because they, they at least trust in the shed blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're going to suffer loss because they're teaching error. But the, are, you, are, are you clear on that? Nope. Nope, come on, get clear. Just I'm, still, I'm still caught up on this thing uh -huh. with the body itself. Okay. Because what I'm, I'm, what, what I'm hearing is the body's going to be judged? No, 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 no. The body is not going to be judged. The things done in the body, that's what the scripture says. The things done in the body is what's going to be judged. The body itself, the flesh itself, it, it, it's going to go, it, it, we're going to be, uh, 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 our, our vile bodies are going to be made like unto his glorious body, Philippians 3, right? So our vile bodies are going to be like and like unto his glorious body. So the, the flesh is not the issue. It's the things done in the flesh that's the issue. That's why it's not about building up the flesh. It's about building up the spirit. So the more you reap, the, uh, 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 God, uh, God is not mine. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right? The more you sow to the flesh, of the flesh you shall reap corruption. The more you sow to the spirit, uh, of the spirit you shall reap everlasting life. You see that? So it's the things that's done in the body, not the body itself. Because we're going to get a glorified body. This is mainly the things that you. It still, to me, sounds like it's not the body; it's the spirit. Even if you've done something in this body, uh -huh. your when, spirit calls. When you uh, let, let let me let me say this: when you do something in opposition to God's will, is that your spirit doing that? What is the first thing that God quickens when you're saved? Colossians two. No, the spirit. He quickens your spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that happens. The reason you can get eternal life is because your spirit man will never sin again. Why? Because Christ lives in you. He can't sin. He's not, he does not, he can't be associated with sin. So your spirit man won't sin. That's why it's, Paul says in Galatians 5, there's a constant battle between the flesh and the spirit. The spirit lusted after the flesh, the flesh after the spirit, right? Because in the flesh dwells what? Sin and everything bad. In your spirit dwells Christ and everything good. 
Right? So that's the battle. So the things that you do in your body, if it's good, it's the spirit of God. If it's bad, it's the sin that dwells in your flesh. So the things that you do in your body is what's going to be judged. Not so much the body or the spirit itself. It's the things done in your body. Does that clear it up for you? It's not so much, it, it, the, the body is not the issue. This is just an outer shell for us to walk around here on the earth, right? But the, that's why it, 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 Paul says, put no confidence in the flesh. And go to Romans 6, because this is, what I, this is why I went here. 13. But let's start at 12. Well, let's start at 11. Just gotta go to the whole chapter. Let's go. Let's go to ten, I, because all of it talks about what you're saying. Look at verse ten. For in that he died, he died unto what? Sin. Once. So the fact that he died for your sin is the sin that's the penalty of death. Christ died for that. But you still can commit sins, plural, in your in your body because of your flesh. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto who? God. Likewise, reckon ye yourself, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto what? Sin. The sin, the, the sin, the, uh, uh, the nature of sin, the, the walking after the flesh, and not a, reckon yourselves dead to that, but alive unto God through Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal, mortal body. What does mortal body mean? The flesh. Your flesh, the body that you live, that the 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 the, 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 the the thing that houses your spirit and your soul. That's your flesh, right? And so now, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Listen, don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey the, uh, uh, in the lust thereof. That's what it means to die to yourself and present your body as a living sacrifice, right? That's uh, what that means. Look at verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of what? Unrighteousness. Unto what? Sin. Don't do that. Right? Don't yield. Uh, 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 yield. Does yield mean completely stop? No. no. See, so, so yield may not be following through with an action, but it may be uh, 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 taking a suggestion. It may be saying, well, I, this ain't really going, you know, I just go ahead and do this, but I ain't going to go all the way through with it. Don't yield to it. Because when you yield to it, eventually you got to come to a stop. Right? <laughs> Uh, when you're dealing with traffic, a yield sign. A yield sign means you don't have to stop if, uh, if, there, if there's uh, if traffic is not coming. Mm -hmm. But if traffic is coming, then you have to come to a what? A stop. That's what yield means, right? So what it's saying, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Mm -hmm. But yield yourselves unto who? God. As those that are alive from the dead. Listen, how in the world can we we were dead spiritually. When God quickened our spirit to, uh, uh, upon, uh, upon salvation, we become a what? Alive. How can we be alive but still dead? There's nobody walking the face of this earth that's physically alive but declared to be dead. You see, I, that makes no sense, right? So how is it that we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Makes no sense. Why would you serve sin when you are alive now? You're quickening your spirit. Right? That's what it's saying here. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto what? Wow. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So it's grace that teaches us how to, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Titus 2, right? So that's what, that's what we should serve. We should serve God and not sin. But understand that if you, and, and, and understand that God understands the difference between being weak, but just being, I'm going to do it anyway. He understands that. Because sometimes you're weak in an area, and you fall victim to that. God understands that, and he'll deal with that accordingly. He's a just God. He'll deal with that accordingly, right? But there's sometimes we do things because I know what I know, but it just, you know, I just want to do it. You know, I know I shouldn't be angry at you, but you just, you know, I, I'm going to do it anyway. I know I shouldn't curse you out. But I'm going to just do it. See, there's some things that you do anyway. 
But the more spiritually mature you come, the more you come to a fellowship and gain strength from other believers of like mind, the more you, you should sin less often. You see that? Amen. And, 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 and so now, do you understand now? There's still, we still have a life to live while we're in this mortal body. And the life that we live now is what's going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Not for salvation, but for reward. Right. Because there's a lot of saved people that will not serve Christ in this mortal flesh. And it's a war so, going on. It's, it's a see, war the going difference, on. The head. difference in that whole statement mm -hmm. is when you serve Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the body as until you get saved. What about those mortal fights that you had before? Why would you have why would you have a fight before you get saved? A lot of people do and not don't don't recognize. But but what would that wouldn't be the fight that Paul is talking about because how would you know that's a fight if you're not even saved anyone to know that? It says the spirit lusts against the flesh. But if you're dead to, if you're alive in sin, alive in Adam, which means you're not saved, how do you know what fight is going on? You don't know. And once you accept Christ, boom, clean slate. Yeah. You got to clean say as far as far as your salvation is concerned. Yeah. But there still may be things that you did that consequences may arise because of the action that you committed. But the consequences are going to be loss of reward. There you go. You're going to be there and you're going to say you're going to realize immediately you could have done so much more. Mm -hmm. And you're going to say, and that's what you're going to suffer. You're going to be, oh Lord, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So much more. Mm -hmm. Let's lose this. I could have saved so many more of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. people are yeah. And you're right. And, and that's the and that's the motivation to live holy. Yeah, to that's that. the that's the motivation to, because it's a angry it's a bad thing to be in the uh, hands of a of a of an angry God. Mm -hmm. Judgment means just what it means. Mm -hmm. Suffering loss. That it means just what it means. Mm -hmm. Right? So that it, that's going to be even though we're going to be in heaven, we're going to be glorified together, we're going to suffer loss first. Those of us who have done things in the body that you shouldn't be doing. Which all of us have. Which all of us have, right? That's right. Because understand, that affects your service. Mm -hmm. If you're living a lifestyle of sin, that affects your service to God. Mm -hmm. Because now you're not living a, uh, you're not pre performing good works. Because you're not taking heed to the one who does the good works in you. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're not being profitable unto men. God is going to judge you on that, the judgment seat of Christ. That you're going to suffer loss of reward because of that. And I don't think we should be so hard on ourselves because if we just look at Brother Paul and his struggle, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Yeah. Every That's time he wrong. tried to do right, wrong would present itself. Yeah. Yeah. So it just let, lets you know that it's a struggle. So, I mean, don't be hard on And yourself. That's why I said God, God is right. a, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, he's a righteous judge. If you're weak in an area, that's not the same as just... Uh, just like when you're uh, 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 teaching somebody, somebody who's ignorant of the truth may reject what you're saying. That's a difference that you tell somebody, they understand it, and they still reject it. There's a difference. You see that? If you're just weak in an area, that's a difference than totally rejecting what God's word says. Because a lot of times you don't know enough scripture. That's why it, that, what we talked about Sunday is being babes in Christ to being more spiritual, being fed on the meat. While you're a babe in Christ, there may be some things you just fall victim to because you're weak. You see that? But the more you understand truth, the more God begins to build up your inner man because he's working in you. Now you have strength to overtake some of those smaller things that you fell victim to. Because now at this point, it's no more being weak because you're strong now. Now it's just a, a, a sign of going against God's word. You see that? But, uh... Kind of give you an, an, an example. You uh -huh. see, we here, you go out, you cut somebody off, and you start roll down your window, and you're cussing each other out. Mm -hmm. The Lord, you know, I mean, just say the Lord can show you, okay, this is what you did. That guy never got saved. Now, if you just slowed down, you honked on your way to them and said, God bless you. Look, the guy would have gone away in life, and he would have gotten saved. And you could have said, man, I could have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love, because I was acting in the flesh, I didn't do that. And you're going to suffer loss of and a lot of times, and that's a my good question is okay, if Paul, who persecuted the church, uh -huh. chief of sinners, and he's and, and Paul suffered in his body he because of that, the same judgment at the judgment seat. 
Will David lot. suffer that same thing? Because David is not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. David still is on earth. Yeah, he's on this program. He, the judgment seat of Christ is for the body of Christ. The things that Paul did when persecuting the church, he's Paul suffered physical ailments. Mm -hmm. He suffered some of those things in his mortal body. He didn't get away with it. He suffered because I of that. I mean, it's, it's more like what I'm trying to make sure of. Once you're in the spirit. Once you're in Christ, you're, now the things that you do is, is accountable to you. That's the difference. Because if you never become in Christ, you don't need to be worried about no suffering, that's no loss. You need to be worried about going to hell. Now, <laughs> so, yeah. now so, it's, it's, so, it's so, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right. accept, and then your works, as opposed to what your body does, it's if I don't, if I, the more I can help, the better. Yeah. And that's our, and that's what fellowship is. That's what we're talking about to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. The that's your is, that's your service to God as as ambassadors of Christ. That's our service. Fellowship as a church, we're to come together and fellowship, come into the unity of the faith, be strengthened and built up in the Spirit through the Word. Go out and make all men see what the fellowship of the mystery is. That's what we're being judged on our service, the things we do in our bodies. That's the key service. Yeah. Because the devil can't destroy your salvation, but he can destroy your service. Yeah. You see that? He can destroy your witness. You see that? Because the way you behave mm -hmm. is not going to destroy your justification. Right. You're saved eternally. Mm -hmm. But it will destroy your witness to men who are watching you. Amen. You see that? And the, the things that you've done in your body is going to you're going to be you're going to be affected by it now. But it's also you're going to suffer loss in the judgment seat of Christ. Just like those people who live a lifestyle of sin, just say some people say and, and grieve the Holy Spirit. They take advantage of God's grace. Some people will and are doing that. Right? And they live a lifestyle of sin. How can they serve the Lord living a lifestyle of sin? You can't. Right? Because of that, they'll be saved, yet so is by fire, but they're going to suffer loss. And it's going to be the terror of the Lord at that time. Great question. Right. Now that per this person that you're talking about that's just gonna lose reward. Uh huh. Still when they when people say to you, how do you answer them? When they say it, well, you know, if I believe what the work that Jesus did on the cross, mm -hmm. and um, they're saved, and you don't lose that salvation. Uh huh. If if I'm living all I know how to live, and they're just living, you know, any kind of way they live but they say I'm still gonna make it just like you do so you know what's the point because both of us gonna make it because we both believe in the same thing well, you're okay. so why, you'll be, why are they gonna make it do they understand why they're gonna make it and where they receive their salvation right. from there you go because the so because listen just like when we were in the uh, when we were in the other church mm -hmm. all they said was oh it's God's great we're saved by grace through faith and the minute you ask them, what are you trusting for salvation? Oh, you got to do something to stay saved. They're, they're not trusting this shit, but in Christ. So a lot of those people who believe they're saved are not saved. So you say, so now I'm, I'm to ask this person, when they say that to me, that I believe in the same gospel that you believe in. The ask them, what is it? What, do you, what is it that you believe in? What is it that you're trusting? Okay, so once they tell me that they believe in the blood, Shed blood of Jesus Christ. That he died, died for, sins, uh -huh. and he rose again. Uh -huh. And then, then they're saved. Okay, so and so, so they believe in the same thing that I believe in. Okay, so I've so, asked them that question. They've given me that answer. Okay, so now That's what? The gospel so, of their salvation. Okay, so now, now what you would ask them is, what is the point of being saved? What's the point of of of, 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 of believing and trusting in that if you're going to continue to do the same thing? So you got to understand now. God looks at the heart. Because remember he told them, Isaiah 29, 11, their lips, they honor me with their lips. See, it's a difference because they told you that as opposed to what they really trust and believe. You see that? Wait, but let's just say we got two people, one of them 
is definitely saved according to between the between you and Christ. Uh -huh. One of them saved, and one of them isn't. Uh -huh. Now you're saying this can't happen. Well, let's just say the guy goes and lives a life that's nowhere near what he should be living. Yeah, he's, that's good. That's gonna happen. Yeah, okay. yeah. I just say okay, he'll be cleaning the little trees in heaven, and I'll yeah. be driving the Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and he'll still be in heaven. <laughs> and the thing, about, and the thing about it is this: you gotta understand that. Go to what were you saying? Go to sec, go to. We'll end with this. They know not what they say. Or what they, they don't. They don't understand. Uh, uh, it's a scripture you're looking yes, for. It's a scripture. G give me a they word. They know not what they do. They don't understand what they're doing. Oh, oh, designed to be teachers of the law, no, yeah. be, knowing what they say, neither what they affirm. Yes. Yeah, First Timothy so one seven. They, they, they really don't understand. All right. and, and like I said, some people there, there's, there's. Some people are actually ignorant. They just don't know. You see that? Some people are actually, and God will take that into consideration. You know, he's just. He's going to give every man what's done in his body according to that. But back to, but to this situation, if you go to 2 Timothy 2, this is how you deal with that. And those that need to leave, I know we're over time. You can go ahead and leave. Uh, uh, but 2 Timothy 2, look at verse 24. This is how you deal with people that have that type of mindset. Because sometimes you're going to have people that did that uh, they just they won't live and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. They just won't. But they are saved, right? Look at verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of the earth, and some to what? Honor and some to what? So you but they're in the same what? They're in the same house. So that so that's the example of what you're talking about, okay, right? That's it, right there. So now, but look at verse 24. And look at what well, look at verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, mm -hmm. he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So understand that there's some people in the body of Christ who are saved, who are not sanctified, who are not meet for the master's use, so God can't perform in them. Right. That's right? And so what you have to do is understand verse 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle until all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose what? Themselves. And themselves. So your job is to be what? Meek. Meek. Not strive. Apt. Apt to teach. Gentle. Patient. And then now, this is God's job. If God peradventure, which means perhaps, will give them what? Repentance. A change of mind to the acknowledging of the what? Truth. Because remember they're what? Saved, but they have not come into the knowledge of the truth. So now, your job is to be patient at the teach. What's God's job? To change their minds to repentance of the truth. That's his job. Because his will is that all men be what? Saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Your job is not to bring somebody to the knowledge of the truth. Your job is to teach them, and it's God's job to change their mind. Right? Amen. Now, what is that person's job? Their job is in verse 26. And they, and that they may recover themselves, right? Out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So it, I, love the, I, I love these passages and verses. Because you have a job. God is going to do with his word. Uh, uh, Isaiah 55 says, my word will never go out void. It will never return unto me void. It's going to do its intended purpose, right? Now, so understand, you have a job, God has a job, and then that person has a job to recover themselves Amen. after hearing truth. So you, you, you can't worry about that. Yeah, and, I need it right there. Yeah, I, you know, I need it to, to scripture. Yeah, some people, you know, some people, they just, some of us are, are trying to serve the Lord, you know, but some of us just, we're taking, we're, we're, we're grieving the Holy Ghost. Some of us, we're, 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 just, we're taking advantage. Right? What verses that come to the knowledge of the truth? What verses are that? Uh, First Timothy 2 and 4. Yes. Well, let, let me let's pray us out, and you can ask me after this. Uh, any other questions, comments? Remember, there'll be no Bible study next week. No Bible study next week. And uh, uh, if you guys don't know what you're bringing for the potluck, uh, see me, and uh, we'll get in touch with Tequila so we can uh, so you'll know what, what to bring. Uh, all minds and hearts clear. Father God, we thank you now for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the uh, insight and, and illumination to your word. We thank you for truth. We thank you, Father God, that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, for the word of God completed, O oh God. We thank you for the knowledge of right division. Father God, we're pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Father God, uh, we're not living as though we have apprehended, but God, Father God, we're pressing toward the mark. And Father God, continue to give us the fervor and the strength to move forward and to continue to uh, uh, study your word, show ourselves and prove unto you uh, that we're able to not be ashamed at the time appointed. And Father God, help us to rightly divide it. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen. Amen. Yeah, y'all remember Frank Basal and his family.